Thank you very much. Um, absolutely, I'm definitely going to talk about the present, uh, if not the future. Uh, call this presentation the future of fashion because we're going to talk about um, some of the reasons uh, behind or actually what, what deals with the future, what the, what the fashion industry will deal with in the future. Um, my presentation will focus um, a lot about um, some of the obstacles we see as continuing as the industry has been driven up till today. Um, and uh, therefore coming with some of the examples of what we've been doing within the Danish Fashion Institute and the Nordic Fashion Association to deal with some of these issues. Um, sustainability has already been mentioned. I'm going to focus a little bit on that. Um, and I basically think that this presentation deals with a, as an example of regional development and cooperation built on these issues of sustainable fashion. Um, so I, I also, I'm also happy to say that um, we are a, a happy member of the Cultural Ability Project uh, going on right now, mentioned by Michael earlier in his presentation, and really also much inspired by the fact that we're talking about soft powers um, in, in, in Michael's presentation in terms of this power that lies within the fashion industry. You can argue if it's soft or if it's actually a quite hard power. At least we almost dictate what you're going to wear tomorrow within this, uh, within this, uh, in this industry. So, of course, with that power also comes an enormous, um, an enormous um, responsibility. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that responsibility um, as, as well. So just a quick overview of the Danish fashion industry. Um, basically, as um, already was pointed out by Rasmus, um, the fashion industry is the fourth largest export industry in, uh, in Denmark. Um, and it's not only that, it's also the ninth largest exporter of fashion in the OECD countries. Um, we believe that we can do much better than that. Um, Danish Fashion Institute basically exists to promote Danish fashion globally. Um, but we also believe that there is an untapped potential in terms of focusing on green growth. So there you go. You can see the paradox here that I'm getting to, right? Talking, at, talking about sustainable fashion at one point and talking about pushing products at the other point. I'll get back to that. Talking about the fashion industry in a global context, you might want to know that it's one of the, one of the largest industries in the world. Um, actually, looking at it from a, from a turnover perspective, it's, it's, it's said to be the third largest industry. It's also one of the biggest polluters in the world. We use almost one third of pesticides, mainly for the production of cotton. So it's quite a number of um, challenges we have in terms of the chemistry put into not only producing um, the cotton that we use, but also in terms of the dyeing and the rest of the processing uh, in term that it takes in terms of actually getting our clothes to where it is. We use a lot of raw materials, uh, not just cotton, but uh, certainly also uh, crude oil, of course, to make polyester, um, and a lot of other raw materials goes into the processing of our clothes. Um, and basically, uh, just, a simple, just a simple example here tells us how much water actually goes in uh, to produce one T-shirt. The number for a pair of jeans is around 10,000 liters. So just imagine that. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of resources that goes into uh, the production of, of, of clothes. And of course, that is a difficult uh, thing to continue with at the same pace as we do today if we don't think differently. We see this as a great opportunity to work differently uh, within our industry and actually create new products. Um, and not just the environmental issues that I was talking about. Certainly also there's a huge focus on issues uh, around social dimensions, such as human rights, corruption, uh, child labor, and so on and so on. The list goes on in terms of issues that we deal with as part of our industry. So is there a need for change? 
Well, you might say that, and this is why I, the Nordic collaboration comes into place. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute, what we actually do in terms of creating change. But just wanted to, I want you to reflect a little bit on pictures like this. Factory fire in Bangladesh uh, a couple of years ago. Um, unfortunately, around 100 people died because some of the, uh, fire, the, the emergency exits had been locked with padlocks, so the, um, the, the, uh, the workers in the factory could not escape from the, from the actual fire. You might know the uh, Chinese saying, um, you know the, uh, the next color in fashion by looking at the color of our rivers. Um, this is just one example uh, of uh, how, how that looks. And of course, you all remember what happened last year in April, more than uh, a little more than one year ago, when 1,127 people died in the collapse of Rana Plaza in Dhaka in Bangladesh. 1,127 people died. So how to cope with these challenges? Well, it's not that we've come up with a solution, but we've at least tried to create the necessary change through collaboration across the Nordic region. This is really what I was um, getting at in the beginning of my presentation, this paradox, or I might even go as far as say, it's an oxymoron to talk about sustainable fashion. At least we're trying, we're trying to do that. And I know um, there's a lot of skepticism to watch an industry this big actually wanting to do something else than just make money. So we're trying to find new ways of actually earning those profits, of course needed within enterprises, and at the same time also create sustainable change. So go beyond this paradox. So we came up with a vision within the Nordic region, um, across the Nordic region, um, and a vision for change in terms of how we can actually maybe even take a lead on some of these issues. So we came up with this project called NICE. It sounds nice. Um, it stands for Nordic Initiative Clean and Ethical. And as you can see here in, our, in, in the logo, uh, it, it really is a joint commitment to take a lead on these issues around environment and social issues, and perhaps even to lead the, the way for the rest of the world. So the NICE project is owned and run by the Nordic Fashion Association. Ten organizations, different parts of the fashion industry coming together, working on these issues, sharing knowledge and sharing, sharing resources, developing tools together with the industry associations, with the organizations, uh, the fashion weeks where the companies come together um, to discuss these issues, but also representing more than 8,000 members of brands and retailers across the Nordic region. So we wanted to show the rest of the world that this part of the, this part of the world, this region, could actually take a, uh, an effort and actually take leadership uh, on these specific issues. We decided to focus on designers, on consumers, and networking in order to take this leadership. You all know, maybe you know, the rule of thumb in terms of, as a designer, you actually can influence up to 80% of the environmental impact of a, of a product in the design phase, just by changing some of the, the actions you take within the design phase, 80%. Um, the consumers, of course, if we can move the consumers, we believe that there will be enough, uh, enough demand to also create more change within the industry. Of course, a lot of, of, our, of our members ask, so where is the demand from the consumers? Once we see that, then we'll go and change. We believe it's not going to come only for the consumers, because we as an industry certainly also need to change. So I'll just give you a few examples of how we created leadership uh, already. We came up with the first sector-specific initiative under the UN United Nations Global Compact. It's basically the world's largest initiative around sustainable development um, for, for companies. And we created this sector-specific initiative, basically a manual for 
pretty much small and medium-sized fashion companies to take a first step towards engaging them and their suppliers in the issues of sustainability. Every second year we host the world's largest event on sustainable fashion where um, more than 1,200 people gather here in Copenhagen actually um, together with leading actors from the rest of the world. So here we have the Gucci's, the Saint Laurent's, the Alexander McQueen's, um, the Louis Vuitton's and so on and so forth. The leading fashion and luxury companies of the world talking about the next ambitions for a sustainable agenda within the fashion industry. It takes place in Copenhagen. Very important signal to send, we believe, that this important event takes place in Copenhagen, as we tend to say, the fashion capital of Scandinavia. I'm not sure the Swedes would agree with that, but um, we tend to say it anyway. And we, of course, cooperate very much with the Swedes. We just tease them a little bit as well. 40% of your garment's climate impact lies not in how it's transported, because that's only 5% of the climate impact, but 40% of the climate impact of your garment lies in the way that you care for your clothes. So how you wash it, how often you wash it, at what temperatures you wash it, how you tumble dry it, or if you don't tumble dry it, please don't, if you send it for dry cleaning, and so on and so forth. That's where you can do a lot to also change the impact of this industry or the product of this industry. So together with H&M and the leading uh, organization in, uh, in Europe, we introduced this thing called Clever Care to guide consumers to focus more on how they care for their garments. Currently, we are developing a take-back system some of you might have been in an H&M store recently, within the last one and a half years, to see that they actually have containers, in-store containers, where you can actually collect, you can put your used garments into these containers, and they'll see too that eventually these garments will either be reused or recycled. We're trying to create that first in Copenhagen, then in the rest of Denmark, and then in the rest of the Nordic region, Currently testing how to create that take-back system built on what's already being done by charity organizations, of course a lot, but so far they only collect 45% of the garments out there. So we want to take that to the 90% return rate we have, for example, on cans and bottles in Denmark and the rest of the Nordic region. So a lot of potential here to create bridges between charity, retail, the city of Copenhagen, as in this case, so the municipalities and household collection. But I think the, the, uh, the most interesting and I think also the, the most pressing issue at the moment is to create one language within the fashion and apparel industry to talk about sustainability. I've talked to you about a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of pesticides, water use, could go on about waste, CO2 and all the social issues. But to have one, one language to talk about sustainability, and this is why we are part of an international initiative to do this. So SAC, the Sustainable Appeal Coalition, does this, consists of 40% of, or represents 40% of the industry, together with us and leading brands and retailers, but also manufacturers government initiatives, government institutions, and so on and so forth, they're creating the HIG index, a number between zero and 100, telling how sustainable your garment is. Independently, if you go into a Levi's store, an H&M store, a Nike store, wherever it is around the world, you'll see the same number between zero and 100, telling you how sustainable this particular garment is. It's one united language for the full industry. That's pretty powerful. So we are creating change within this industry, but much more change is needed, certainly. But we need to take advantage also of this power that lies within the fashion industry to actually be able to create change. As I said, we can dictate what you wear tomorrow, but could we also, in that messaging, in terms of the communication platform that is represented by the fashion industry, actually take into account also the change that we want to create for the future of our globe. Thank you. Thank you.